Successful authors come from all kinds of backgrounds, but I only know one living one who comes from a coal mining background, although, of course, the wonderful D.H. Lawrence did too, and I guess some of that coal dust must have rubbed off on Sandra Brennan. Be you. Make sure your voice comes out loud and clear on who you are, and that's a culmination of all of your experiences in what you write. That's tough. Um, I would say it's the one I'm always writing at the moment. Um, I'm, right now I'm working on one that's so different, and, and my editor and agent have asked me to write this book, so it's not something that was my idea. So I'd say that's my favorite right now because it's hard. It's a challenge, and I love... They want to write about where I'm from in the Dakota Territory, and so it's never been done before um, in the West, um, a modern Western. So it's, that's the most fun book I'm writing right now. Within the first few sentences, I can tell if I'm going to enjoy this book or not. That That is, is so key that people have opening uh, lines, opening paragraphs, because I can t tell the tone and the cadence and the voice very quickly. You know, I'm a mother and a grandmother and a daughter of a beautiful mother um, that I'm taking care of right now, and uh, so I write when I can. I'm also a full-time miner, so I have two jobs. I love to write and I love to mine. I'm a limestone miner like Fred Flintstone. So um, I try to write uh, when I'm happiest and my happy moods are more, more in the morning or uh, when everything else is done in my life. So I make sure all my tasks are done and then I write. So it's usually either late at night or early in the morning. I wouldn't say it's a book, but probably the authors that inspired me when I was little. I love John D. McDonald's Travis McGee, um, and my dad turned me on to mysteries, and that was the first mystery I'd ever read, and so of course I read all of his books. And, um, and by the way, if you love the John D. McDonald series of Travis McGee, very much like the Roy Grace series that Mr. James writes, um, I love that because it's the old style mystery that you just love the character that's the main character in the book. And that's, I love that. Um, the other one, modern day, um, in, when Lee Child came out, Jack Reacher, that's my guy. That is, it, it's, it's so depictive of my area that somebody is, just does the right thing even if it's not by the rules. And I love Jack Reacher, and so I, I fell in love with Lee Child's characters. My guilty pleasure is writing. I feel um, that's the only selfish time I have in my life. I have a big family. I have eight brothers and sisters, and we have a family business, and I have kids and grandkids. So when I get my me time, my bubble bath time, that's my guilty pleasure is when it can be me in my books, in my voices, and in, in my writing. So that is my, that's my guilty pleasure, I for get, sure. I get that. No, no. <laughs> In fact, the funny story is I had a teacher when I graduated from high school that gave me a creative writing scholarship. And I'm like, I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an engineer. I'm a math person. I love numbers. And then I used that scholarship to get an engineering degree. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, what does he see that I don't see? So, so um, no, I, I'd, never, I'd never even imagined I was good enough to write anything. So, but he was in the back of my mind, and I'm so glad now that he was. So thank a teacher for that. For me, planning a book is, I know a lot of people really believe in outlines, but um, I have a concept that really irritates me, almost like a grain of sand that forms into a pearl. And the pearl for me is sleeping at night and dreaming about it like it's a movie. So once I see the whole movie, that's when I start sitting down and try to do an outline and trying writing from there. Uh, but it never turns out the way that mo first movie turned out, but at least I can see it in my head first. That's how I write. No, because if it's something that is good or bothers me enough, it stays with me for a long time until I do get it out of my head. So that's what I like about it. I haven't lost any good idea. I always write it down. I have a lot of books that I've never even sent to try to be published. I just write, write, write. I think the biggest joy, I hope it is for every writer, I, I hope somebody out there doesn't think they can write and wants to be kept up at night finishing that book just like I was with books like yours or book like Lee's or um, the books that keep you up at night that was motivation for me to write is going I would love to have one person lose a night of sleep just one so that that's really huge for me yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> One minute. Okay, uh, I would love to say that you should read something about mining in the West and what that basic industry is, but I have to tell you, if I have to use my minute, it's to pick up a Roy Grace book because Roy Grace is way more interesting than Liv Bergen. Um, I love Roy Grace. I love everything he does. Wow. I think that... Liv Bergen could probably be one of Roy Grace's, you know, maybe older daughter. She's a young girl, Liv Bergen is, but, um, you know, they're just really similar personalities. They like happy endings. They like to get to the end. They, they really love to find the truth in people and the honesty in people, and it's not noir. So and where does she come from? Write, where does she come from? She comes from South Dakota, and she's, uh, she, she's in the basic industry, which people are forgetting. You know, the basic industries of ranching, farm, farming, timbering, and mining, is very old school, but it's what everything the world goes around with that basic industry. So I love her. She's great. Sandra Brennan, thanks so much for coming to the author's studio. It's been just great having you.